14 years ago, on the 21st of May 2008, JCU launched its reconciliation statement, and to commemorate that and its commitment to reconciliation, it named the University Library on the Townsville Bebigu Yumba campus after Eddie Kwoki Mabo, a Torres Strait Islander activist and former JCU staff member and student. Eddie Kwoki Mabo was one of the most important historical figures to have spent time at the university. Since then, we have hosted an Indigenous art exhibition, the Mabo Library Art Exhibition, regularly. This being our 11th exhibition, Having an exhibition on a university campus is a huge endeavour for us and provides a fantastic opportunity for JCU staff, students and community visiting our campus and library, an opportunity to engage not only with the powerful artwork on display, but also with the story behind the man. On Mabe Day 2020, as part of JCU's 50th anniversary celebrations, we launched the Mabo Interpretive War, ensuring there was a permanent presence in our library to highlight the university's connection with Koiki Mabo. It was also an opportunity to showcase our iconic building, its stunning architecture, and its connection to the landscape on the Douglas Bebigu Yumba campus in Townsville. Two thousand and twenty two marks the thirtieth anniversary of the Mabo case, one of the most significant turning points for Aboriginal and Torres Strait Islander peoples in the fight for native title. To celebrate, JCU Library is hosting the exhibition Tribute, our own mix. This tribute exhibition features artworks from the late our own mix, a nationally and internationally acclaimed and celebrated Queensland artist and proud Kuku Medici man. Meeks was passionate about and committed to keeping the connection to culture and country alive through his life and work. This exhibition has been collaboratively curated by independent Cairns-based artist Jeff Dixon and the manager of JCU Library Special Collections, Bronwyn McBurney, and includes selected paintings and prints created by Ron Meeks in the years between 2001 and 2021. This exhibition pays homage to both Koiki Mabo and Aron Mix, creating a memorable event that demonstrates gratitude, respect and admiration for their significant contributions to Australian culture, community and political change. Roman said, ultimately, my work centres in on journey and connection. It's always challenged where I come from, he said, where we go from, where we go next. It's like reading a storybook and get into chapter 13, and suddenly a new character enters, and things change forever. Everything has a whole new perspective. Writing something about Eddie Koiki Mabo and her own Raymond Meeks in the same hundred words in an artist catalogue, celebrating 30 years since the historic Mabo land rights settlement, is it easy? Not as difficult as you might think. More dawning is writing a catalogue essay for a building teeming with librarians. Though Aron Mix was an Aboriginal artist of national and international repute and Eddie Mabo, a Torres Straits pearl diver who became a national figurehead, both men shared a single driven vision that identifies them into perpetuity. They shared a vision delivered by their joint mastery of communication, compassion, connection and equally innate tenacity. They shared the ideals of egalitarianism and the sanctity of the land, the sea and the skies. They shared a vision towards a future eternally connected to the umbilical cord of cultures and history that existed here millennia before European intervention. They shared a drive to keep culture and country alive. The figures, the figures are really based on the natural shapes that were growing out of the ground, like most of the trees and the gum trees and the eucalypts. Um, but also, the, uh, if you're standing on a hill, even when you're looking out of an aeroplane, you can see 
the way the river courses back into the landscape. You have this kind of serpentine, sensual shape that that, that disappears as a perspective design into uh, into the distance. And then you've got all these other shapes which are uh, other mountains, I guess, which are like these reclining, beautiful, again, sensual, sensual figure. So in Aboriginal culture, it's about you know, the serpent creating and destroying. And that's really what I'm trying to strike up within my work, this kind of balance of masculine and feminine creation and destruction, darkness and light, to kind of balance out the imagery um, and, but also talk about subject matter that, that, that is currently um, of concern to me, uh, whether it be deaths in custody, which still is happening, or whether it's, it's about um, having access to country, which is consistently being destroyed. Arone had a profound reverence for the Indigenous success story. The leaders, the educators, the achievers, the mentors, the negotiators, the artists, sporting legends, talented young indigenous singers on the voice, the shining lights and the champions within indigenous Australia. Eddie Mabo was also there, a shining light and a statesman. Arone frequently painted a journey, quite often a manifestation of keeping culture alive and always depicting a vessel holding figures that accompanied him on, the, on that discovery. Ancestors, mentors, lovers, teachers, family and spiritual guides. He lived in much the same world, always conscious of who was instrumental in his existential development. Eddie Mabo was also there. Koiki was articulate and confident in the knowledge and power of words and the strength in negotiating. Arone was also a strong and articulate communicator and understood the incredible connecting power of imagery to engage people. These inherent gifts allowed them both the ability to navigate often through hostile, dis disparate worlds, ideologies, bias and marginalised communities, while also interpreting and conveying information into a common or more readable language. Her own skill at the uh, connection was impressive and unique. He had a vast network of people stretching both nationally and internationally. They had something in common. Doctors and health professionals, ac academics, people in the media, celebrities, grassroots communities, cultures, artists, students, teachers, aged people, young people, and on and on. Conveying the meaning of his latest Uber to a bunch of academics or diplomats at a fancy opening in Paris or Buenos Aires, or explaining hepatitis or safe sex practice sitting on a circle of red earth on community to sensitive ears. The conduit to healthy and constructive dialogue for him was art. For her own art facilitated dialogue, sustaining country and story sharing. His own practice connected people. Although none are present in tribute, Aron produced many paintings and prints relating to the Mabo story. In 2019, Umbrella Studio, Contemporary Art Studio in Townsville seated and curated Legacy, a touring exhibition acknowledging the 27th anniversary of the Mabo decision. Now on the 30th anniversary of Mabo, the exhibition is still touring Australia. In the catalogue, Aron re reiterates his concerns for, in his words, the nature of where we're at, humanity, our loss of innocence, and how do we move forward from here. I curated tribute with the vibrancy and life force of Aron's colour palette in mind. As much as his unique design and stories, along with the immediacy and fluidity of his impeccable line and brushwork, his ubiquitous boat and his fetish portrait iterate our origins, our present and our future, and those were a significant part of the journey. His vibrant representation of environment and the tropical far north intertwined with all the hopes and dreams he wished for culture and country. It's more than pertinent and I'm only to be proud that this exhibition be held in this library at JCU. 
Within his artwork, he invented his own language with symbols and fluid figures that engaged and captivated us like characters in a story. His storytelling was innate and evolved over time. Somewhere between his ancestors and the collective unconscious to collide with the language of an urban contemporary indigenous artist. Through this whole practice of producing my work, it is, I feel that what I do when I am painting or printmaking or sculpting is I'm forging links with my own country and my culture and who I am. <laughs>